Okay, yeah, if you don't mind, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, Maybe yeah. A little, five, ten minutes on the other side is fine, but yeah, that'd be great. Cool, awesome. How are you doing, by the way? Great. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to our very first TTE virtual chat with Lunakai, where we are still exploring the humanism within all of us with a little help from technology. Today we welcome podcaster, writer, and DJ Case Kenny. He's the host of an Apple Top 20 podcast called New Mindset Who Dis. He sold over 100,000 copies of his journals in the past eight months, and he's a badass at card tricks. Case, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you become a, an inspirational podcast and life guru? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, I definitely never set out to do this at all. Like, I'm pretty, like, it's a weird thing to say, but I'm like a little, still a little cautious of gurus, experts, coaches, things like that. Like, I am very adamant about being just a guy being a dude who's learned a lot in his life. And I've discovered that just like I think everyone's been given a talent in life, um, I've been given a talent as well. And I think sometimes we don't always think of talents as we think of, we tend to think of talents as like overt skills, right? Singing, a athletics, brains, um, things like that. The skill that I think I've been given is the, an ability to simplify things. And I discovered this rather late in my journey. I'm 33 and I just discovered that I have this knack for simplifying decisions in my life, simplifying what makes me happy, what makes me confident, what's, what makes me fulfilled. And a couple of years ago, I was like, I'm going to, as a challenge to myself, start this podcast talking about um, life and growth and dating and mindfulness, these topics and leaning on this skill I had. And um, it kind of just took off humbly. So and people really get a kick out of, um, I don't know, my take on these complicated life uh, events and challenges and frustrations that we all face. And I just approach it in the only, the only way I know how, which is just simple and down to earth in a sense. And um, it's just been really fulfilling to me. So I just keep pulling on this string and seeing where it's leading me and it's uh, leading me in a lot of exciting directions. So I keep doing it and I love it. Yeah, well, very cool. So do you connect with people naturally? I, uh, yeah, I think so, for sure. I think my other skill that I think a lot of people have been given as well is, is empathy. Observational empathy as far as me just making sense of the world, but then an ability to connect quickly with people as far as, you know, cutting through the, the surface level stuff and getting at what really matters and then trying to connect in that sense. Uh, but I always, I always talk about like my podcast is my form of therapy. If you listen to my podcast for the past like three years, like you can like really see how I've grown through it. And I would say in my 20s, I was definitely more introverted and I'm still finding my vibe in life. And now I would say I'm more extroverted. And I think that's awesome. I think the labels we put on ourselves are kind of wacky. It's like, you could be an introvert one day and an extrovert the next. And I like, I very much have uh, seen that in my life. Uh, like I love to talk now. <laughs> and I think previously I might not have said that. So yeah, I think now I find it easier uh, and fulfilling and it's a, it's a great, uh, it like fills me up to be able to connect with people. So I love it. So you address many interesting aspects of being human in your podcast, which Talking to Earthlings is all about. Can you tell us some topics you've discussed on your program as well as uh, share some wisdom with us? Yeah, of course. My favorite thing to do. Um, in general, I call it is, uh, mindfulness. And uh, I think mindfulness to me in my 20s was kind of this daunting thing. Like when I thought of mindfulness, I thought of, about people who you know, talked about their chakras and their, their frequencies and vibrations, things that never really made sense to me. Um, I would be the guy who kind of made fun of that. Uh, but then I kind of really came to understand that um, all mindfulness is self-awareness and self-awareness is like the biggest catalyst for everything in life. Like self-awareness, I'm convinced is the, is the solve to any issue you're having, whether that's dating, career, personal development, confidence, self-esteem, whatever it is, is self-awareness. And all self-awareness is, if you break it down, is the call and response of asking yourself why. And I'm just so in on that um, in, the, in the sense that asking yourself why delivers you the answers as far as, you know, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Like the biggest issue I've always faced in life that I think so many people face is we do things without knowing why we do them. 
we're dating certain people, we're in a relationship, we don't understand why, we're not taking the time to understand that. Same with job fulfillment and just general habits and tendencies. Asking why breaks that down. And then asking a wider why in life also breaks down the assumptions we have about what's right and wrong in life. Like the soundbite that I always repeat on the show is, there's no right way to live your life, but there's a wrong way. And the wrong way is to think that there's a right way. We put ourselves in a corner a lot of the times because we assume that everyone else has it figured out that that happy couple, I need to be like them. Or if you look at that single person, I need to be like that guy or that woman because they've got it figured out or that entrepreneur or that business owner or whatever. And the reality is that should all serve as inspiration, but then that might, might not be right for you. So everything I talk about on the, on the podcast is helping people discover truths for themselves. And that starts with mindfulness, which is self-awareness, which is built on the power of why. Um, so pretty much any episode I've ever done is like built on that. And um, it just makes you happier. Like you're not operating in this gray of life, right? There's no ambiguity. Like you might do the wrong things, you might make the wrong decisions, but you're always, you're, you're, you're powered by the fact that you know why you're doing it in the first place. And I don't think you could ever lose when that's your mentality. So very passionate about that idea. And I talk a lot about it on the podcast. And earlier you said that all this kind of just fell into your lap, correct? I mean, in a, in a sense, like um, I never set out to be a podcaster in, in, any, in any means. Um, I never thought that I was particularly gifted in the realm of mindfulness either. You know, like I'm, I, you know, you talk about the 10,000 hour rule, right? Like that's what it takes to become an expert. I don't think I'm an expert, but I, I have been practicing the craft of mindfulness for the past six years and then three years professionally and it's just practice makes perfect like i spend all day every day either talking into a microphone or writing on my computer or writing quotes on instagram or talking to people and doing interviews and creating journals or writing in my journal and like i've created it from that certainly um so i mean there's something to be said about the adage i mean practice and experience and just the power of of intent like i think that's what's you know helped me there so in addition to writing journals, you've also written a workbook. Can you talk a little bit about how writing brings perspective to life? I mean, tell us a little bit about your books. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you said it. Writing brings perspective to life. I mean, so... Um... I, I've created a bunch of journals, and these are 60-day journals. There are 60-day journals that are designed for you to take 10 minutes a day and really get intentional about what you're feeling. I wanted to create an experience that encouraged people to take what's in their mind and their heart and just put it on paper. And I know it's cliche, but it's like, there's so much power in like touching and feeling and looking at your thoughts as opposed to just keeping them up there. So that, that was the whole basis of everything. Journaling isn't an earth shattering concept, but I think what I created um, is unique in its, in its application of that. So created these journals and then to reference of the, the workbook is, um, I was like, it would be really cool because a lot of the friction we have in life is related to dating and relationships. And I was like, man, I've never really seen a journal that's focused on that. Um, I've seen, you know, different card games and things like that that are designed to help you get to know your partner and things like that. But I've never really seen a journal that really embraced um, that your mindset when you're single. Because it can be a dark place when you're single, particularly for if you've been single for a long time or if you're feeling lonely as a result of being single. So I was like, I want to create something that is really lean forward and energetic about being single. It celebrates being single. And it does that by breaking down all the amazing things you can discover about yourself and what you want when you're single. So I created this workbook. It's called Single is Your Superpower. It's like a journal, half journal, half book um, that just has a bunch of my perspective. Plus exercises and journal process that gets my perspective in your head and then you take it and apply it your own filter to it and then you get your feelings on paper people think it's really powerful because not only i mean the sound bite is clear single is your superpower being single is this amazing time in life and i think it's the questions you ask yourself when you're single dictate what you do when you start to date again and that's everything if you're armed with intention and clarity about who you are your boundaries your standards what you're looking for I think you're going to have an amazing time. And like, that's my purpose is I want people to celebrate being single and then I want them to enjoy dating and not hate it. And most certainly not think that there's something wrong with them if they haven't found their partner and the exercises in the journal really help do that. And people tend to, uh, you know, just be smiling more after going through the process. So, um, I love doing it and people seem to enjoy it. So, um, I, I like, I like putting that one together, a very specific, journal for a very specific time in life and that's when you're single 
So you've also collaborated with other artists and added soundtracks to your inspirational messages. Can you talk about that? Um, yeah, I released these things called Music and Mindfulness Mixes, um, AKA Dance Music Guided Meditations, where I team up with artists and DJs, um, like loud artists and DJs, not like calming. We're talking Alesso, Kygo, Cheat Code, Sam Felt, Griffin, um, with those guys. Some of my favorite type of music. Quite honestly. Ew, phenomenal. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So so you know what I'm talking about. Very upbeat. 125, 126 beats per minute, Coachella, Lollapalooza vibes, like that kind of stuff, right? So it's dance music, it's EDM. Um, and the reason I did this was one, I love dance music. I love house music. I'm in Chicago, the home of house. I've always loved loud music in my face. Like I used to go to all the festivals. I'd be that kind of idiot with his shirt off in the front row. Like, I just love it. Like, that's who I am. So I wanted to find a way to combine that, the energy of that, with the vulnerability of mindfulness. Um, so I do. I, come, I work with these artists and DJs to put together these mixes, and then I overlay my audio, and it kind of just takes you on this emotional journey. Um, and it's good for, like, working out or a walk or something like that, and people really seem to enjoy it because I think about myself and I think about when I'm most vulnerable. I'm not great at meditating, kind of too ADD for that. I am in my most vulnerable state when I listen to dance music. It's just the way I am. I just feel vulnerable and free and honest with myself. And you combine that and you kind of time my audio with the bass and the drops of the music. It's just this really cool flow state that you can get into. So I, I've really enjoyed working with a bunch of those guys doing that. And um, I've come out with my own music, but I, I prefer to do the collaborations because they're better at it and uh, I enjoy their music and uh, I, I'm excited to do a bunch more this year and do some live stuff once the world's a little bit more normal. But yeah, I just love it. Combining my two passions, mindfulness and house music. That's awesome, man. That's really, really, really awesome. Thanks. So Case, I have a joke for you. Are you ready? Yes. How many inspirational speakers does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> None, because the change starts within you. <laughs> That's good. <Yeah. laughs> Bravo. I like that. <laughs> it's so funny because when this series started, it was uh, it was all just very serious yeah, questions. Yeah. And then I just like, I was one day was like, you know what? I just, it needs, just needs to be a little lighthearted here and there. And so now I just like throw in like a corny dad joke every time. I approve of that. I'm a big dad joke guy. So I like that one. My last question for you, and this is the most important question that relates to talking to her things. What does it mean to be human? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it means a lot of different things. I, I, think, I think it means to be forgiving, for one. I think it means being, being open. I mean, I, I dropped my best soundbite earlier about you know, the right way and the wrong way to live your life. And I think being human is about embracing that fact. That there truly is no right way to live your life, meaning there's no right way to be happy. There's no right way to be fulfilled. Like these are all things that you decide for yourself. And I think that comes down to freedom. So being, you know, being human is the, the ability to make choices for yourself. Those are both mental choices with the way that you observe your emotions and see the world and also actions with what you do and what you decide to do. Like, it's the craziest thing. I, I make a living from sharing my feelings on the internet. I would never think that that was a way to live my life. In my late twenties, when I was single, I would look at you know the dudes at the club and I'd be like, "That's the right way to be single." But that's not. I have learned that that's not necessarily true. And same with relationships. And I think that it's that determination that makes you human. It's the the compassion for the freedom that you have in exercising the observations or of the world around you, and then making your own decisions about what's true for you. And that's such a gift. Like it's just something we should just be so grateful for that we get to decide what's true for us. Like that's awesome. Like it amps me up every day because it's always changing and that's so cool. And we have the ability to change our minds. Like that's awesome. So I, that, that amps me up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. Well, Case, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, is there anything that you would like to share with our audience? Any upcoming projects, any releases, any, anything that you would like to share? I'm coming out with another journal later this year. Um, I'm working on a secret project that um, is combining various elements of sight, sound, smell, and touch with mindfulness, which is really cool. But otherwise, um, the podcast is, is the spot for everything. And I'm going to be continuing to release 
uh, episodes there and, and dance music guided meditation. So that's all new mindset who does and they'll all be there. But thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Well, Case, I just want to say thank you so much today for joining us for our first TTE virtual chat. You're full of wisdom. We really appreciated you sharing your story and sharing some of your knowledge. And just again, thank you so much for being on Talking to Earthlings. Thanks for watching the segment of TTE Virtual Chats. You are contributing to our mission of changing the world one conversation at a time. Become a part of the TTE journey. Like and subscribe. See you again soon.